Hey CA, my name is Heather Yule. I'm one of the pastors with CA students and today for Digital Discipleship, I'm gonna talk about the reframe principle from one of Craig Groeschel's books called Winning the War in Your Mind. This has changed my life and I'm excited to talk to you about what the good news is. Paul tells us in Romans 12 too that we can be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And I just wanna talk about one practical way that we can experience life-changing transformation just by intentionally choosing the way that we think about things. My husband Tyler and I were recently at a very busy and seemingly understaffed restaurant. Throughout our time, we had this waitress who patiently helped us through the menu, even though she had lots of other tables to wait on. She brought us out a pitcher of water because she knew that the staff wouldn't be able to fill our water glasses as frequently. And she even brought out our bill a little bit early so that we could leave whenever we needed to without having to flag her down. We left her a generous tip because she was so helpful and hardworking. Meanwhile, somebody else at another table adjacent to us uh, they were having a very different experience with that same waitress. It was clear by the tone of their voice, by the way that they were treating her, that they were not feeling that she was hardworking and patient. They were rude, they were loudly complaining, uh, they rolled their eyes when she dropped off the water pitcher, and I can only imagine that their tip matched their attitude. See. Tyler and I, we told ourselves that she was thoughtful and patient and hardworking. And I'm just guessing that they told themselves that she was slow and absent and inconsiderate. And here's the thing. I honestly don't know who is right. I didn't actually talk to her. I don't know what the reality was. But I can tell you that Tyler and I seem to have a much better night than they did. And this isn't a story to tell you how generous and understanding we are. See, the whole reason I could get inside their heads is because I've been there. I, I do that exact same thing sometimes. See, I viewed experiences as one way or another, not based on objective reality, but based on my own interpretation of objective reality. And I'm guessing you've done that too. Maybe you also know that sometimes the stakes are higher than whether we have a good night out to eat or not. Sometimes things that happen in life, they don't just throw off our day or even our week, but entire seasons of our life, entire years, or they can even change the way that we view our whole lives. Maybe we've asked God to do something, to heal someone, to change things, and it didn't happen. Now our view of God is altered and it actually affects the way that we pray. Maybe we are a victim in the past. I know that's part of my story something completely against God's heart. And now we're tempted to go throughout life with an underlying fear or resentment. Maybe someone labeled us as incapable, incompetent, or unworthy, and perhaps without even realizing it, we've actually taken on that identity. See, there's so much in our lives that is out of our control. But here's the good news. While it's true you can't choose what happens to you, you can choose how you think about what happens to you. And by the grace of God, you can actually control how you frame your real life experiences. See, our frame is how we view things. It's how we interpret what's happening. When you hold up your phone to take a picture, you get to choose what you include in the frame, right? But that doesn't actually change what's on the other side of the lens. However, it does change how we think about and focus on and remember what was there. And if we're not aware of and intentional about our frame, we can end up ruled by our subconscious perceptions of the world around us. See, reframing, it's about identifying the frames that we have and changing our perspective to a more helpful and godly view. Sounds good. Okay, let's do this. What do I mean by a more godly view? Well, let's go to the Bible, of course. Paul was a guy who had his life totally changed by Jesus. And remember, he's the one that said that we can have our life changed, transformed by renewing our minds the way that we think. After he had his life changed, he taught people this truth. And the men and women that were working alongside Paul faced some pretty intense circumstances. They were destructive circumstances, dangerous circumstances. And 
man, in writing about their experience, here is what Paul said. Here's a part of what he said. Second Corinthians chapter four says this, we are hard pressed on every side, perplexed, persecuted, struck down. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus. Outwardly, we are wasting away. That's part of what Paul said. That was a reality, but it wasn't the whole reality based on Paul's framing. Let me read it again. 2 Corinthians 4. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Persecuted or perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes, we fix our frame, we choose to view our lives, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. CA Church, Paul was the ultimate reframer, he, and he's not denying reality. He's calling out the deepest reality. He doesn't say, I'm fine, things are fine, everything's fine. He's not hiding behind a smile. He says, yes, things are bad, but they're not over. And that's just as valid of a thing to focus on. Paul says that we have a choice of where to fix our eyes. And so how do we do this? We reframe our experiences to focus on the reality of God at work. It's not that we deny the bad that happened. We just refuse to let the enemy have any more power in our story than he's already had. And so how do we do this? Well, just like those verses said, whenever you think about your experience, whether intentionally or something just triggers those memories or something happens to you in the moment, don't just let your mind wander. I've done that before and it can go to a very dark and negative place so quickly. Instead, we do some version of what Paul does in those Bible verses. We can name the wrong that happened. Don't shy away from it. Don't deny the reality of that pain. And then, we can name God's goodness in the midst of it. When I first started doing this, it honestly felt strange and unnatural. But as I kept practicing, as I kept intentionally choosing to reframe my experiences by searching for God's goodness in the midst of it, it became easier. And now it's become more natural to me. Not necessarily always my first thought, but it doesn't feel so strange anymore. So CA, where do you need to take background? What event or person from your past has too much power in your present and maybe even over your future? When you think of that experience, that relationship, that memory, what can you zoom in on instead? How can you frame it in terms of God's goodness? See, often we frame our past experiences uh, in just a way that zeroes in on ourselves. What I'm encouraging us in today is to instead reframe our past and present experiences in terms of God's action. Here are some questions to get us started with this. How did God provide a way out of that difficult experience? How was he present with you in the middle of it? Or how did he send someone to encourage you when other people were discouraging you? Where have you seen him working in something that you thought was going to go completely differently? Maybe you even prayed for it to go differently. How has he used a time in your life when you are weak to put his power on display? Or how have you experienced his rescuing in a way that some other people maybe never will? Remember, don't just let your mind wander when you think about what's going on in your life. Your thoughts might end up in the same place that they always do. And if that hasn't been working for you, then I encourage you to reframe. Choose to look for God's goodness. 
If you're struggling to see God's goodness or it's too painful for you to revisit those past experiences without help, I encourage you, talk to someone you trust. Talk to a pastor or a trusted friend who loves God and His Word. Talk to a therapist. Talk to someone who can help you look for God at work in your life. This made all the difference for me. And I continue to partner with God and ask Him, God, how were you at work in that experience? Remember, this isn't just the power of positive thinking. It's life-changing because it's the power of positive, godly thinking. C8, let's frame our experiences based on God's goodness in our lives. And I know if you're anything like me, you're going to need God's help with that. So would you pray with me as we ask God to be with us? Lord, thank you for giving us the power to reframe our real life experiences based on your goodness in our lives. Lord, thank you that you've been with us every step of the way in our lowest lows and our highest highs in the mundane and middle. God, I pray that you would give us, like Paul, a perspective that doesn't only acknowledge the bad, but also calls out the good. And not just any good, but the one who defines good, the God who is good. Lord, thank you that we don't have to do this alone. Lord, I pray that you would be with us through your Holy Spirit as we embark in this reframing journey. It's in your powerful name we pray, Jesus. Amen.